All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the other coast the left, uh, by entrepreneur, speaker and author Pia Silva. How are you doing, Pia? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Pia is in Brooklyn, and Pia is a small branding agency uh, coach, a partner, and brand strategist for Worst of All Design, mm -hmm. <laughs> where they <laughs> where they build badass brands without the BS. And what we're going to talk about today is uh, how to turn expertise into profit, combining passion and strategy for a, a thriving business. And I think uh, I think Pia, that's a it, it, that resonates a lot today because, as we know, more and more people are looking to uh, build their own brands. You know, maybe go out on their own. You know, be a contractor, a consultant, or whatever. Start their own business. Uh, so, before you even embark on that, and uh, what are some of the questions you should ask yourself? Well, you should first make sure you actually know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people skip right to the I need a brand mm -hmm. before they have really had enough clients to know if they're good at delivering the service that they deliver. Um, and the, you know, while that is also maybe a little unethical, it's it's also what are you going to build the brand on? You you need mm -hmm. actual real world experience and data and that expertise on which to build a really powerful dare I say, badass brand. Yeah. So, I mean, so is it, so then obviously, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a situation where you really need to understand the expertise level that you have and whether you have something that you can share. Cause a lot of times it's face it, a lot of times people can be really good at stuff, but they don't know how to translate that for other people. It's like that unconsciously competent thing. Absolutely. And actually, uh, those are who we specialize in in my agency because there's a lot of people who are very good at what they do consultants coaches anybody delivering a high value service mm -hmm. but when they show up in person they're magnetic you know that's why people buy from them they trust them they believe what they have to say they're well spoken they're you know they're powerful in their communication and then you go to their website and it falls flat it sounds like mm -hmm. everything else um it just sounds like the kind of jargon now we're seeing written by ChatGPT before it was just kind of low level marketing copy. So what I do is help figure out how to translate that special something that you get from them in person onto their brand and their website. Yeah, yeah because let's face it, I mean, being you can be very passionate about something, but it has to that has to carry through in all areas, not just as you said, not just when you're engaging with somebody, but it needs to come through in 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 your website, yep. in your LinkedIn profiles, in your marketing, and and I think that's that's a part that sometimes people struggle with, which is obviously why they come to to you, mm -hmm. is is just understanding how to translate that passion and and not fall into the trap of becoming someone else. Yeah, and. Usually half my job is actually to unlock their fear of putting it out there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've worked with so many. I, I'm thinking of a, a, an executive coach, speaker, trainer in particular. I worked with a couple of years ago. Just really dynamic, um, powerful woman in person had a little bit of a potty mouth, like cursed a little bit, you know, really a, kind of aggressive in her, um, in her speaking tone. And then her website, you know, when I met her after seeing her website, it's like, oh my gosh, this isn't track at all. But guess what? The way that you speak is why people are hiring you. That That's what they want. That's why they want you to be a speaker on their stage mm -hmm. because of the powerful way that you speak. Let's say that on your website. Let's show up like that. Mm -hmm. And it took a little bit of coaching to get her to fully embrace that because for some reason there was a disconnect. She was totally fine showing up like that in person. But when she looked at it on a website, oh, that's too much. You know, that's too edgy. And I said, but but you are why they hire you. So why wouldn't you want to put that on the website? So I think it's just as much kind of um, getting over that hump and fear of really being seen. 
Yeah, and and what you just alluded to there is that that uh, self awareness as well as as you said is helping somebody say, okay, this is who you are. This is what resonates with people. Now you need to to bring that out because, as I said, we don't always really understand what it is that uh, you know we're not our greatest uh, assessors of how good we are at something. Definitely not. And um, it's, you know, sometimes it does take somebody on the outside to be able to see it. Uh, but not just that, to be able to see it and synthesize it into something really clear and concise and specific. Because I think the other thing I see people, like the mistake, if you will, um, that I see people make a lot or the struggle that they have is that you know, when you're thinking about your own brand, well, you know everything about yourself. So Mm -hmm. you know all the multifaceted reasons that you're so awesome. And if you try to distill that down into a concise, clear brand, you're going to have a hard time picking and choosing what should I focus on and having restraint. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to even talk about this forward Mm -hmm. facing, even though it's a really powerful piece of who I am, or maybe it's a really, I think, valuable thing that I do. We don't have to talk about all of that up front. And that's when you get websites and brands that are just saying too many things. And it's it's confusing because they're not, they don't practice the restraint of just saying one thing that people can really understand and remember and take with them. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think focus is, is, so, is so critical because like you said, I mean, most people, there's a lot of different things you could probably talk about a lot of areas you could stray into but staying on staying on it on track and focus is critical and then the other thing that i I think sprung to mind there is well is i I suppose you deal a lot with the imposter syndrome you know where people have you know they have real expertise they really want to do this they're passionate about it but then when it comes to doing it they're like they start to question themselves Absolutely. And it's amazing how people can have imposter syndrome after sometimes decades of experience, (laughs) decades of experience showing them that they are worthy, that they are experts. Um, So part of it is absolutely them being willing to do it anyway. And -hmm. and I find that it is a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy too. So you have imposter syndrome and then you don't show up. Well, if you kind of can push through that first amount of fear, and put yourself out there, you'll actually, it'll help feed the other side, which is, Mm -hmm. no, I I do deserve to be here. I am an expert and look at me. I look expert on that, on that website or, you know, in, in that marketing copy. And now the worlds are coming together. I'm expert when I show up and I feel it and I look like it. And I think that really helps with imposter syndrome, actually. No, absolutely. And and I think the, I mean, the other part is like, uh, how many times does somebody call you out for something? They don't. Because you do genuinely, most of the time people genuinely do know what they're talking about if they have the experience of it. And I think just what you alluded to also is, I think sometimes we're really bad at looking backwards at our, at, the things that have gone well and the experience, even looking back at the bad experiences and saying, wow, that was a huge learning experience. Other people could learn from that. So I think sometimes we're really bad at mining our past. Absolutely. And of course, we we give a lot more weight to the negative things that happen yeah. and a lot less weight, right? That's scientifically. Um, but to your point, uh, I don't, you know, being an expert and being seen as an expert people don't connect with you as an expert because you did it all perfectly. They connect because they can relate to your story and maybe something that happened in the past where you were just where they were. And, and this is how you came through it. I mean, that's, that's who I want to learn from. I want to learn from people who have been in the trenches and did a lot of things that didn't work and found the things that did work because they developed grit and resilience. And that's what you need as an entrepreneur. And that's who I want to be learning from as well. So you want to show both sides. It's not about looking perfect ever. In fact, when people look totally perfect, it kind of, um, I think it, it, there's something suspicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it disconnects the audience a bit because I mean, if you see somebody coming too perfect, you're like, well, I can't really relate to this. So mm-hmm. you want you want somebody to come across as as more human. And and storytelling is obviously a key component. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, storytelling, you know, has been proven to be um the way that people remember you. So uh, everything from a full on story of your journey to just a little anecdote in the middle of an explanation or a small metaphor. Um, I find every time I give a talk, it's the little, it's the little story I brought into it, the, you know, the, the metaphor, the image that I, that I shared to explain the idea. Everyone walks away 
and that's the thing they mm -hmm. remembered. Um, I'll give you a quick example. I, I used to do this talk about badass branding, and I talked about how you know taxi cabs in New York City are everywhere. There are thousands of them. You see them everywhere. Um, if you saw a one of those old fashioned, you can picture the old fashioned checkered cabs. Yep. Um, you'd remember it. You might even share it on social media. But if you saw one of these, and I had found this um, DeLorean taxi cabs, like from the Back to the Future, yep. you would absolutely remember that. You you would take a picture of it, like like it is different. And let me tell you, for years, people would send me photos of DeLoreans. They would come out to me after, I wanna be a DeLorean you know, taxi cab. The whole concept was summed up in this one story and image. And just, it's so powerful. If you can use it in your, in your business and your marketing at all, you absolutely should. Yeah, that's a that's a great example because that has so many that has so many different angles to it. Uh, you know why people would have been uh, you know would have been amazed by that. DeLorean's actually it built up in the north of Ireland. Actually, there you go. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I only know it from Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 a little bit of a yeah. No, DeLorean went to uh, went to Ireland to the north of Ireland. He set up a, a manufacturing place there. That's no where kidding. DeLorean's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. yeah, there's a whole more. There's a lot more Fun to that fact. story, but we don't. Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot more to that story, but we don't have time. Right? <laughs> um, but that's a that's a great example. And how do you help? I mean, you obviously sometimes come across people who are really expert, uh, uh, you know, have got great expertise. They've got great passion for it, but they don't feel confident as in speaking or in in articulating how do you because i think sometimes people think that if you're going to speak in front of audience it doesn't matter how big big or small or whatever that you have to be you have to always be big and loud and and that's not that's not the reality people people engage with the person and their story and i think sometimes people avoid doing this because they think well i'm not that kind of person mm, yeah that's a great point um I will tell you that I absolutely hired a speaking coach when I, I had been speaking, but I was very nervous, very uncomfortable on stage. And it was serendipity. I actually met this speaking coach at an event and we ended up um, trading services because he needed some of my help. And he told me that, you know, he could teach me how to be this powerful speaker. And I had always thought, oh, those are, that's just how those, that's just how those people are. They're, mm -hmm. they're just naturals. And he looked at me. He was like, nobody naturally gets up on stage and has that kind of power and charisma. Like you not only are most, almost all people is this learned and definitely practiced, but anyone can learn to show up like that. And I don't mean necessarily being big, mm -hmm. right? But I just mean uh, showing up with confidence and poise and being able to speak clearly, it's absolutely something that can be learned. And I like to tell people that because the bubble had to be burst for me. <laughs> and so I, I like to pass that knowledge on. Like if you wanna be a, an amazing speaker, you wanna be a confident speaker, you just have to learn how to do it and practice it. And you absolutely can. Yeah, and I think the coach is 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 great because let's face it, I, I always say this to people, You, I guarantee you spend probably a lot of money and time with yeah. your hobbies, right? You probably get coaches, you know, you're people who are big into golf and they'll hire somebody to help with their swing or whatever. And I always wonder how, how often do you hire people to help you with your day job, with the thing that actually puts bread and butter on the table, right? And and therefore, I, I think that's a great piece of advice. You know, if you're gonna go into something, you you may look at it and say, well, oh, investing in a coach, oh, that's a lot of money. And you're going, not really in the long run or whatever it is, it's, you'll look back on it probably as quite a small investment. Absolutely. Well, it, any of these skills will also touch every aspect of your life. So the communication skills that I worked on with the purpose of becoming a, a better speaker, a more powerful mm -hmm. speaker on stage, absolutely has translated to everywhere else that I show up in my business and my life. How I talk to my six-year-old son <laughs> is influenced by what I learned about the power of you know, slowing down. I say, as I speak very quickly on your podcast, slowing down, you know, speaking um, in a way that commands authority and mm -hmm. saying things with a period at the end and, and moving your melody down. I mean, these are things that if I really need my son to do something, I speak to him in a certain way and he does it. And I would never have known that that was even possible if I hadn't done this kind of training. So, yeah. You don't you don't do a, a presentation along with it, do you? I, I don't, <laughs> but I can't wait to teach him how to do that. I'm going to be like, you should pitch me things so yeah. I can critique your, your pitch. <laughs> so, and I think obviously a core element of this is the authenticity piece. 
Uh, and and uh, again, because uh, I get a lot of people sometimes ask me about podcasting and, you know, um, et cetera. And one of the things that I always tell people is, uh, you know, the, the, the essential part is to be yourself. And you know, if you're if you're a serious analytical person, be a serious analytical person yes. because that's what people are going. That's going to resonate. If you're an if you're entertaining, you're funny, you're whatever. Be like that, but don't try to be what you're not. And, and I think that because that will come across very quickly, and people will connect with with you if you're authentic. Eventually, they'll see through you if you're not. I love that you said that. I used to kind of uh, describe it as your brand is like one piece of you that you pull out and expand onto a billboard where you mm -hmm. just want to go extreme with whatever that thing is. So if you're, you know, like a, like an anal retentive accountant, like be that, like, let that be your brand. What a great brand. You know, there's plenty of people who want their, their accountant to be the nerd, like wear a pocket protector, wear glasses, like be <laughs> all in on it because yeah. that will be memorable and you can to your point like you can actually be yourself which is obviously the easiest person to show up as is yourself and not somebody else yeah yeah i always quote my compatriot uh, oscar wilde who said like be yourself because everyone else is taken <laughs> <I love that. laughs> it is a great piece of it's a great piece of advice uh, so tell me uh, what if, if, if somebody listening in and saying okay I think this is what I want to do. I want to get started. I want to, I, I want to, you know, really build a brand. Get. I'm really passionate about. So what's the place to start? As we said at the beginning, like make sure you're you're actually expert or you have some expertise in what you're doing. What's the well, next part? Yeah. Well, I mean, by make sure you have expertise, I mean the first thing you need to do is is be working with people, right? Yeah. You want to you want to be simultaneously developing your skills and that happens by working with people or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is your expertise are in. Um, and then the next part is is starting to either you do your own the work yourself of starting to reflect in and see like, who am I working with? Who am I attracting? Why are why do they like me? What what are they most excited about from me? Where is the most value I can I can deliver. And I mean, these are the kinds of things that when people hire us, these are the questions that I'm asking them. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you love to do most? Who who do you deliver the highest value for? Um, and why do they hire you? And, and what is most potent about you? And that's kind of where I would start. Um, you, you know, you can also, um, shameless plug, you could read my book, which talks about exactly how you can do this specifically if you're selling expertise. It's a couple different ways that you can look at your brand to try to differentiate it from the competition as well. Yeah. And we'll have the book uh, link below the book, uh, Badass Your Brand, The Impatient Entrepreneur's Guide to Turning Expertise into Profit. Excellent. Um, and then, and then once, once you've, once you've established, you know, all of that, um, what what's the process of of distilling down to to the core of your brand? Um, well, I think it's an evolution. Uh, I think it's something that happens over time. I teach specifically how to badass your brand, and mm -hmm. by that I mean um, I define that as having two critical characteristics. So, one, a badass brand um, magnetically attracts as much as it repels. So the the stronger your brand is, the more you're going to attract and repel people. So, you know, that's a mindset thing we were talking about earlier. You got to be okay with repelling people. Um, and then my definition of a badass brand is one that can charge a premium price and still get the clients. So you mm -hmm. can charge more than the competition and still close the deal. And the reason you're able to do that is because you are uh, you're magnetically attracting them and you're being so mo much more extreme on what you have to deliver than anybody else that you basically put yourself in a category of one. You know, there are plenty of people who do this service, but there's only one Pia at worst of all design who's going to badass your brand. You can't get that anywhere else. And so that's what we're really looking for. What is the thing that you can deliver in the way you deliver it that nobody else can? Um, that's when you know you're you're hitting badass brand status. Excellent, excellent, and and just and just finally, uh, what would you say to what would you say to people who are who are on the fence about uh, about really putting themselves out there? I think um, I would start with, well, what do you want? Uh, what's the end goal? You know, you need to have a bigger reason than just, um, I want to make money. Uh, being an entrepreneur is not the easiest way to make money. So uh, what's the end goal? And, and is there a bigger why? And I think if you connect to 
why you want your business to grow and all the things that it's going to give you, your family, your community, the world, um, then that should be the reason that you can now say, okay, I got to get over myself because there's a bigger reason that I have to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can connect with that, then it stops becoming about the ego of like, I'm scared to put myself out there and be judged or, you know, right. so what? So somebody doesn't like you. I'm telling you that for your brand to be successful, you want people to not like you. <laughs> so yeah. go, go in that direction and you're going to be much better off. Yeah, I love that. Uh, to just finish on, I love that piece that you said about you, know, you wanted to attract the right audience and repel the wrong audience, right? And and that sometimes is a struggle for people because it's, especially when people are starting out, you think all business is good business. Uh, so I mean, that's a critic. That's a critical point. Listen, thank you, Pia. This has been uh, this has been fantastic. All of Pia's information will be below this video, including links to the book and uh, and her website. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. So um, I had a branding agency, and now I really focus on teaching other one to two person branding agencies how to scale their businesses to 20, 30, 50 K months without employees. So it's really about scaling your profitability as an expert. Um, it's, it's based on the principles that I use to scale my business. I wrote about it in my book, badass your brand. Um, and I think if you're an expert in selling uh, services in any industry, this model can apply. I just happen to train people inside my program, no BS uh, agency mastery. I train to only train one to two person branding agencies. Um, and John, I actually brought um, a gift for your listeners, Ooh, if, you, excellent. if you wouldn't mind. Um, I just, I just, just took back the exclusive rights from Audible on my audiobook oh. uh, of Badass Your Brand, and I would love to gift it to your listeners. If you guys are like audiobook people, um, you can totally buy a copy on Amazon or buy it from. Um, you know, buy it from Audible, but I'm happy to give you uh, a link to do that. So I put it at nobsagencies.com backslash sales pop. Fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. And we will include that below as well. So listen, thanks again, Pia. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you.